guys, it is Elisa here, or the Diamond Stitcher, as I go by on YouTube and Instagram. Hello, good morning, or afternoon, whatever time it is you are watching this video. I hope you are doing well. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping in. Really happy you are here. I hope you would consider subscribing and sticking around for all things diamond painting related. I post three videos, three or four videos a week right now while I can, and I'd love to have you. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you are notified when I do post a new video. And before you forget, give this video a thumbs up for me. It really helps a small channel like mine grow. Today, I have finally decided to make the how to use washi tape video that I meant to do a long time ago. Uh, it just got away from me. I just finished filming a how to diamond paint with squares video. So you are going to see that there's a little bit of work done on the top here. I'm actually going to send this kit off to mom. So mom, this is coming to you. If you're watching this video uh, as your first square diamond painting to um, get the hang of it. An absolutely adorable image. This image was purchased from the DAC Amazon store on amazon.com. It's called princess and the P kitty. Marilyn Kastanoff is the artist and it's a 33 centimeter by 33 centimeter kit. I thought it would be perfect to show everybody how to use washi tape. Now this is washi tape that came in the toolkit for this kit. This I've actually unrolled some of it, so this isn't sticky. So let's get rid of that, put it off to the side. So I'm going to show you a couple different uses for washi tape. Now, where, where, where do we begin? Let's begin on top of the canvas. So what some people do is they actually create a grid on the very top on the plastic part. Don't put it on the glue, of course, put it on the plastic. So what we can do is we create, we can create a grid and we can create a grid that will be whatever size sections that we like to complete. So there's, there's no like math problem, you know, so many centimeters here and there. You can eyeball it like I'm doing, or you can measure it if you're OCD and you like perfect measurements. But we just create a square grid on here, and then we create it going the other way too. Diamond Art Club washi tape here is, is sticky from what I've um, used so far. I think the washi tape is actually getting a little stickier too than when they first came out with it. So that's awesome. Not all washi tape is the same. I don't like doing this method because especially if I'm working on a very large diamond painting, I'm going to have a portion of this in my lap or rolled up. And I find that the washi tape at the corners will eventually start peeling like this. And then you're going to get that and it might be everywhere. So that's why I personally don't use this method, but I know some people, especially if you work on like a flat diamond painting desk, this might be good for you and this might be helpful. Where am I going to cut? Let me, I'm gonna show you. So what they do is you can purchase these on Amazon. It's a ceramic pen cutter. You can see I actually got a pack of six. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of these, but, um, Ceramic blade cutter. This is the most recommended, I think, way of cutting the plastic without worrying about cutting your canvas. It's really hard to see, but on the tip of that is the tiniest little white dot, basically. It's a little ceramic blade sticking out. Why this is recommended is it won't cut through your canvas. If you use an X-Acto knife or another sharp craft blade, when you try to cut the plastic, you might actually pierce your canvas. Now, if you pierce your canvas and it cuts right through, what you can do is put some good solid duct tape on the back. Once you put your diamonds down, they should hold it in place. And of course, you know, if the cut is really big and you know, it's not sitting flush even with the duct tape, you could also seal the painting when you're done to help cover up that or seal that cut in the canvas. But um, note of warning, do not use anything but a ceramic blade cutter, or you can even use small sewing scissors like I have here. And then you can cut the canvas. Now you would have to start on the outside moving in, but um, this is another way to prevent uh, any uh, accidents happening and cutting the canvas by using just scissors to cut the plastic itself. But I'm going to show you this ceramic blade cutter. So what people will do, they grid it how they want. Now this will be a section, or I guess I should show you here. This is going to be the section that I would work on. So I'm going to cut the um, plastic. Now I use the washi tape as a guide to cut, so I don't need a 
ruler. Well, actually, I might need a ruler. I'm not very good at cutting very straight. There we go. I've cut some of that washi by mistake. Did it work? Yeah. So then I'm going to, some people actually, I should say, just do that and they pull this black. And then what you can do is you can use, where did I put it? The cover minder was just here. Here it is. Then you can use the cover minder that comes in the Diamond Art Club Toolkit. It's a cover minder if you're not aware. Is this little fancy thing. It could be a variety of different designs on the top. And then it has two magnets, one glued on and one just floating. We put this little guy on the top and put the floating magnet underneath the canvas, just like that. It will hold that plastic back for us so we can diamond paint on this section without fighting with that plastic. So that's one way to do it. You can also do it so that when you cut this, you cut the entire thing. So you cut it all the way down like this. Whoops. Again, I'm not cutting straight. So using a ruler might be helpful, but we can see when we turn the canvas over, you're not seeing any cut marks through the canvas. So ceramic blade, if you're going to use washi tape in this manner and you're going to create sections like this, then I would recommend getting yourself a ceramic blade. You can also find them on Etsy small shops, but Amazon, you can get a pack of six. That'll last you a very long time. And then what people do is they will do all the colors in this exposed area. Then they will move on to their next section and then they will cut away the next part. The really cool thing about doing it this way though, is you can make it kind of like an advent style. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like course where you don't have to do, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could pick a random square, cut it out and work on it. So that's a really neat thing. Keeps diamond painting interesting. I know for me personally, I always start at the top left and I move across and sometimes it takes a couple rows to really get into a diamond painting whereas if I did it this way I could get to an interesting part right away cut this section out have lots of colors and really see the painting come to life so that's something I've seen people do so this is just one way that you can use the washi tape now I am going to take this off bear with me here I'm also going to take a sip of water it is hot in my part of Canada today. We have actually been in our very first heat wave. I'm in uh, the province of British Columbia and we've been in our first heat wave actually. I'm not sure if it's technically over. It sure does feel warm. It's only nine o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. So now I need to remember that this is exposed. So another tip that I do that I will show you actually, I'll show you here. Now I did make a video on this, but I'll show you this method too. I don't want to. I'm going to flip this around. I'm just trying to figure out a way to do this. Where is the glue and there. So what I do is I will put washi tape down the whole row across. So I'm making sure that it's lining up with the row that I want. And I put it across the entire thing. And then I take my sewing scissors here. I pull up the plastic and I actually use these sewing. Oops, I got some washi tape stuck on here. Let me get that off. I use the washi tape I've just put down as a guide. And I do this. Just like I was wrapping presents, that trick your parents or grandparents might have taught you to cut in a straight line. You just very carefully... Now remember it did that because we've already cut that plastic away over there. I will then pull this back. Oops. And then I put my release papers down on this row. Now I only have two beside me, but I would need three. So I will, after this video, I grab another one to cover that exposed area. So this is what I do. I do this and then once I'm done filling in this entire row with diamonds, I move up and I do it again. I'll put a row of washi tape down just to act as a guide to use my little sewing scissors to cut the plastic across. I love this method because I'm not going to be fighting with washi tape that is rolling up on the edges. Now I will leave this washi tape down while I'm working on this row simply so I know kind of where the glue stops. Uh, but I don't, I find that it won't roll up on the, on the corners like this if I just have it down like that. So that's what I do. Now, the other thing you can do with washi tape is you can use it to cover the border. 
Some diamond paintings that you have, you'll notice on the outside border. So right where the glue meets the canvas. So let me move this so you can actually see. So right where the J's end and the white starts, so there's a tiny bit of overhang of glue. It's about one millimeter on this diamond painting. Some diamond paintings may have quite a bit. I know Diamond Art Club has gotten really good at making sure it's not a lot, but there is a little bit of an overhang. So if you are diamond painting with a nice fuzzy sweater on, or you have pets that shed a lot, or kids, or anything that can, can create a lot of dust or fuzz, it likes sticking to glue. So it might stick to the outside border of your diamond painting, which can make it look a little bit ratty. So what a lot of people will do is they will take their washi tape. Now, oh, this is a bit odd because it's, I'm not left-handed, but I don't want to put it upside down either. So what people will do is they will very carefully, I don't want to get my head in the camera either. <laughs> they will very carefully put this down right at the edge of the uh, drill field, where the drill field stops there. Concentrating and talking is hard, y'all. That and I have shaky hands, which don't make it easy. So as you can see, one layer of washi tape, you're going to still see some writing through it. When you're finished your diamond painting and say you don't want this washi tape down here anymore, you can pull it off. Um, it might stick a little bit to the glue. So just keep that in mind. So let's just do this like we uh, are going to do the whole painting like this. So I'm going to use my cover minder to help me hold this back while I do that. If only we had three hands, right? Now I want this to face. Am I going to have enough? I hope I have enough for this. Again, this is something I don't typically do. I'm not too worried about. What I do when I finish a diamond painting is I paint the border black. I use two coats of a nice um, acrylic paint I found at Michael's Craft Store. And I um, cover up the writing and the glue there. So it, it doesn't matter. So even if a little bit of fuzz got in it, I just paint right over it and to be honest, you can't, you can't notice. I don't display all of my diamond paintings. I do display, usually they do go up for a period of, I don't know, six, six to 12 weeks. It just depends how long it takes me to finish my next diamond painting. I usually put everyone finish up on my wall in the spot that I have in the bathroom where I have the curtain rod hanging. So I just switch them up. So I do tend to finish off all of them with the black acrylic paint. I just find it looks nice. And in my diamond painting portfolio, it looks nice too to finish it off. I don't bother erasing any of this printing because my two coats of black acrylic paint covers it really nicely. But some people do like removing this printing first before painting or putting washi tape down. And they use, I think, an acetone nail polish remover can get rid of that writing. I just don't bother because my the way I finish it really um, really works. So there. So this is the other thing you can do with washi tape. So as you saw, I went through all of the border and I put a piece of washi tape underneath that plastic. Of course, it's not going to work if I do it on top of the plastic. So I just use my cover minder to hold that plastic back for me while I put the washi tape down. And again, that's just to cover any glue overhanging that you might find on your diamond paintings. With the new Diamond Art, Cl diamond Art Club upgrades, I'm finding though that that glue overhang is very, very minimal now, which is really nice. Now I'm trying to rack my brain on any other ways to use washi tape. I think those three are the most common ways washi tape is used. Um, most often when I was new, it was around the border or creating that square grid. Uh, but if you don't like the square grid, you, you also find that your washi tape peels and it just causes a bit of a nuisance. Uh, I recommend trying this release paper method. So again, once I'm done diamond painting this row, what I do is I bring my release paper up here I put it down, whoops, my cover reminder's in the way. I put it down so I know exactly where to put the next row of washi tape. And I put it so 
there's going to be a little bit of an overhang and I'm just double checking that. Yeah, that's fine. Then I put this down. Then I take my scissors and then I would cut this right along that line and then these release papers would go over here and of course this would have finished diamonds on it. I hope that makes sense. I have another video just going over that in uh, in my tips and tricks section as well. But I want to throw this out here for anybody who gets this washi tape and doesn't know what to do with it. I think nowadays the most common is putting a matching washi tape around the border. I actually, I think would look really cute in the end. Um, you can leave it there when it's done. You can trim it down to size. You can put another layer over top just to cover some of that writing a little bit better. The darker the washi tape, the more coverage it will give, right? Um, yeah, and then the square grid. If, if that's something you like doing, get yourself a ceramic blade. Um, they are a godsend. I I used to use a small exacto knife, and even if I tried not to press too hard, I did cut my canvas once or twice and, and never again. And that's when I went to my release paper method. But these ceramic blades actually do work. So if you do like the grid idea, I think I I I want to try it again with some good washi tape because, you know, as I said, when I diamond paint, I usually start top left moving across. And to be honest, it can get boring sometimes. Sometimes it takes me a couple of rows to really get into a diamond painting and then it's like off to the races, right? So um, I might try that method. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to give it a like before you head out. It really helps a small channel like mine grow. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I would love to have you. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when I do post new videos. Otherwise, happy diamond painting, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.